Good morning, folks. Today we've got a lot of work on the sun, some weather and astrophysics, scaling to cosmology, as well as a blast from the past, especially relevant today. We've been watching the active region on the north, shining bright here in 193 angstroms. The sunspot group is in major decay, but not before having given solar cycle officials something to think about. The high latitude region marked yet another appearance in the last few months of the spots that were largely absent the last few years. The brightest flashing here in 131 angstroms is its peak X-ray event, an impulsive rise into B-class range, so not only was it not really even a flare, but when we look to the umbra, we see it was actually the connection made to briefly produce those extra sunspots trailing the leading core. Sunspot appearance, remember, can also shine in X-rays but are not really solar flares, and this one went the decay route afterwards, in fact, took down the entire sunspot group. Solar wind is riding within the higher end of the normal range, with moderate phi angle motion driving the only real variability, and again, geomagnetic conditions are calm. So let's counter with the strongest storm on Earth. At the moment, near Vanuatu in the northern Oceania region and settling above some key global electric circuit connection points in the crust. Remember, this would be the induction pathway rather than the kinetic particle influence. Eyes open on the west coast as well. A multi-day event is underway and shifting southward to provide a number of days of above average rainfall for Southern California. And as the system slides past, the western side drive out of the north will feel a bit chilly given some of the spring heat felt in the days leading up to it. Let's go back to the sun to kick off the science, and we're here getting actual observational confirmation of the beta meteoroid region. It was considered a certain thing that the sun produced nano and micro dust particles, but where that occurred was still speculative. Ulysses gave some data years ago, but now we can confirm. The sun's dust production region is at about 20 solar radii out, with just a fraction of the way to Earth and which is likely subject to plasma pressure outflow from the solar wind and photoelectric combination. And that is a very comfortable hypothesis considering we've just learned that's how dust is deconstructive in active galactic nuclei. There is a disappearing spectral signature for dust grains in active galactic jets that has never been resolved until now. They're saying it's electrically exploded. Photoelectric emission and the tremendous plasma interactions literally cause a coulomb explosion, dust destruction, which would finally account for the observations in the plasma electric fashion. We're going way out now to some of the better candidates for a lensing explanation of the plasma variety. You guys on the plasma electromagnetic side of the lensing explanation are going to want to take notes on this one because what radio reveals is the presence of plasma caught in magnetic fields as the clusters come together. The plasma motion within those fields is what emits radio emission, these massive radio halos around the clusters. And isn't it nice how the radio halos trace around the lensing lines too? Uh-oh, gravitationalists, daddy's coming back. And speaking of coming back, let's go back to November 16th, 2015. My eyes see what my eyes see. Nothing but calm. Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Ah, right you are, Obi. A titanic explosion took place on the Earth-facing disk. Solar flaring remains low because filament eruptions do not have pre-CME flares, only afterwards and only sometimes. This filament actually destabilized a second one to the south of it as well. And we are back to today. We'll end with a brilliant discovery out of the solar physics community that sympathetic or chain reaction eruptions are a real thing. Seemingly linked events had previously been questioned in causation as potential coincidence, but now, for the first time, someone has found an example, this one from November 16th, 2015, when one filament destabilized another. I know it's more than four years after the event, but thank goodness we've got diligent scientists like this who can take the extreme care to notice these things nobody else in the world could notice. Blinks twice with a blank stare. Four years. Anyway, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.